We are the Matea Group of Keller Williams Realty. We enjoy the diverse community that we serve and the lifestyle that Maine has to offer. We'll be talking all things real estate and Maine. Welcome to the Maine Real Estate Show. Let's move on to our, our wonderful guest, Skylar Welch of Maine Point Lending. Hey, Skylar. Hey, guys. How are you today? Oh, Great. Awesome. How is the uh, interest rate uh, today and what you know, what are buyers thinking? Yeah, I mean, I think that the the biggest thing is that there's so much uncertainty with the interest rates. And honestly, some days we are seeing five price changes a day with, wow. you know, you know, I could quote a rate in the morning and it could be lower in the afternoon. It could be higher in the afternoon. So the important thing is that you're working with someone that's really keeping on top of that because there's so many price changes. But we really need to kind of keep that mentality that rates aren't going to stay like here forever. And right now, um, we're getting calls and, and people saying things all the time, like, well, I'm going to wait for rates to drop. I'm going to wait for rates to drop, <laughs> right? But guess what? Everyone in America is waiting for rates to drop. And when rates drop, the prices are going to skyrocket and people are not going to be at offering 10,000 over. They're going to be offering a hundred thousand over because now they feel like their borrowing ability is a little bit better. So yeah, as a lender, as an agent, as a borrower, you have to really have that mindset of would you more, would you rather pay a little bit of a higher interest rate right now get into the home. And as long as you feel confident and feel okay with where that payment is, it's only going to get better from there. Or would you rather wait until everybody is waiting and pay a hundred thousand dollars over that price that you could have just gotten it a hundred thousand less three months yeah. ago, four months ago, and don't have an opportunity to refinance down. And that's your, you've overpaid. So that's kind of the mentality that we need to have a little bit more of right now is just that rates are going to get better. And the reason we know that is because Everyone is trying to get inflation under control. Inflation has gone down a little bit this month, which when inflation goes down, the bonds get better, rates get better, right? So that's what we're working on. And we know that the um, inflation has gotten a little bit better uh, this month. It's still higher than that national average, but it is better, which just means we're going to start seeing those rates trending downward. And I'm in a lot of, um, I would say, social circles of the people that predict what's going to happen with the interest rates. And everyone that is that does that for a living and, and does it accurately is saying that we should expect it by the end of this year. You know, nothing is guaranteed and you never know what's going to happen, but rates are predicted to drop by the end of this year. And everyone is saying that by 2024, 2025 is going to make the refi boom of 2020 and 2021 look like peanuts, right? Because the people that were refinancing in 2020 and 2021 had rates in the fours right? So it wasn't that big of a deal. But the people that are buying now have rates into the high sixes, even sevens. So if rates drop down to the fives, it's going to be a huge deal, right? So those are things we kind of all have to keep in mind is that, you know, we have to go with the flow. You have to kind of go with where it is. And if you can get a property now, it can only get better from here. Your payments can't get any worse. Right. That's exactly right. I mean, and that's the thing is in, in sales, right? There's always the focus on the payments or whatever. Now it's that focuses on the interest rate and it's just blowing people away. I get that they don't have as much purchasing power at a high interest rate. But the media has just done a remarkable job of squashing. And I mean, I get, I get the, the Fed's trying to do the same thing as limit the consumer consuming. Right. right. At the same time, it's like, do you need a house? Yes. Does this check off most of the boxes? Yes. Buy it. Right. Are you already, you can refinance are you later. You can work out something like just, right. quote, and we always talked before five, six years ago, people had no idea what their interest rate was. They just no. bought a house. And <laughs> you know, if it was getting it close then, right. And we've joked about this Skylar too is, well, then you'd say, well, don't go out to eat as often or, you know, yeah. three less times a, a month and don't go get that Starbucks. Don't get no coffee every day Thank and you. you can make this work. Yeah. And people did. And now it's just right for the time being focus on the house. And we'll worry about the rate later. Yeah. As long as you can afford it, you're not overextending yourself. You're fine. Right. Because people got you, people saw those twos, right? People saw rates with the two and a three. And now that's the expectation sure. that everyone's always going to have a rate with the two and three. That's not realistic. And even when rates do drop, they're not predicted to maybe ever go back to the twos and threes. You know, we were right. in a global pandemic, right? Like, Let's hope that doesn't happen again. Uh, the real, the reality of it is, is that rates are going to drop into the fives, right? Like high fours, if we're lucky, high fours, low fives, that's a good safe place to be, right? That's not creating that, um, 
I would say that craziness and in, in fear that people have, but it also gives people kind of a, a place to move up and down from, but it also keeps things steady. You're not giving that money away, right? So sure. it keeps a stable, a stable market. Yeah. Well, and you, br you bring up a good point. We've talked about this many times is, you know, with the, with consumer credit, you buy based on the payment, the payments driven by a couple of things. It's the mm -hmm. price or the rate. Right. Um, sure. And they don't often move the same direction to each other, but there are times when you kind of hit that sweet spot where you can get the best of both worlds. And that's, I think people think that we're going to see prices freeze and rates go back to three and it's not realistic. No, yeah. We're going to see rates come down a little bit. Pricing should stabilize, but affordability isn't gone. And I think that's the fear sure. is that people are thinking, well, I've been priced out of the market. You, you really haven't because as we've said a million times, and it's a phrase we're all, we are all tired of hearing, you know, marry the house, date the rate. You know, if you find the right house and it works right now, great, because there's always the option down the road if it gets better to go back and refinance it and be in a better spot. Exactly. So that's why oh, whenever I'm pre-qualifying someone, the very first question I ask them is what's a comfortable monthly payment for you? I'm not going yeah. to tell them anything. I'm not going to tell them what their max is until I hear what that is, right? Because if I say, if someone tells me their max, their absolute max is $2,000 a month, right? And then I go to them and say, you're pre-qualified up to $750,000. They get in their head like, oh my God, I can go buy that $750,000 house. Like, let's sure. go. Yep. But right. they just told me that their max their max payment they feel comfortable with is, is $2,000. So we're going to go back and say, okay, well, maybe you want to be in that 450 range. Like, what are you looking at for, for towns? Like, what are the property taxes? You know, because people have to think a lot about that because, you know, if they're looking in Portland or they're looking in Buxton or a Rundle, every place is going to have a different mill rate, which... A 550 house in Portland is going to have a different monthly payment than a 550 house in, you know, gray, you know, so you have to, we have to think about those things when we're pre-qualifying people and ask the right questions. Because if you just send someone out with a letter that says they're pre-qualified up to $750,000, they give that to the agent, the agent gets excited, like, yeah, we're going to get this. They go under contract and then they come back and they see their loan estimate costs them $3,900 a month. They're like, I can't afford that. <laughs> and they're like, well, you know, so have to make sure that you're, that they're being asked the right questions and they're preparing them for success. So the agents aren't wasting their time. The borrowers aren't getting hopes and dreams that aren't going to ever be accomplished. And, you know, everybody's on the same page with everything. Yeah. That might be the first time I've actually heard somebody from the mortgage side actually say, I asked the question of where they want to be before I tell them where they could where, be. Yeah. yeah. Because that's a great point. And we've said this a few times, you know, you have to, you, you have to buy the house, not just on the payment of the house, but on that whole household budget. Correct. And you're hitting at, they need to figure that out first before they start shopping for the house. Exactly. Because so, I mean, I can't tell you how many people call me and they're like, yeah, but I want, I want to buy a $300,000 house. That's what I'm doing. And I'm like, well, what's dictating that? You know, like, why do you think yeah. it's a, th well, that's kind of what the houses are that I see that I like. I'm like, all right, well, where do you want your payment? Well, no higher than a thousand dollars, like no way. And I'm like, well, then you can't get a three hundred thousand dollar house, right? So we have to set those realistic expectations from the okay. beginning. And as a buyer, those are the things you need to ask because a lot of times I'll ask that question that people have no idea, right? They haven't even had that conversation with their spouse. They haven't even had that conversation with themselves hmm. of where they feel comfortable, right? They're like, well, that doesn't matter. I want to buy. What what is my max? But when we're looking at a max, like we're not taking into consideration so many things, right? Like a lender doesn't look at childcare expenses. A lender doesn't look at heat, electricity, food, gas, fuel, like all of these things that, and we're also looking at your gross income, right? Like the reality is you're probably making half of that. So all of those things have to be taken in consideration when you as a buyer is, is considering where you want your payment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, speaking of that payment, you know, now we're starting to see it or they're coming back to life more as the, uh, you know, lower money down, um, but it's for everybody. I mean, there's even 5% conventional that I see. Yeah. Even 3% conventional, 3% conventional. Yeah. yeah. So you, you I mean you have, you kind of have that niche now, right. Of, you know, let's not borrow as much if we can still afford the payment. Correct. And, and a lot of, can people, you tell us about that? Yeah, definitely. So we, we do a lot of, um, 1%, a lot of 3% conventional, uh, Wednesday, what was that yesterday? Yesterday we rolled out a conventional 1% down product. 1%. So, with the lender gifting up to 2% two percent or up to $4,000. But the thing with that is it's not for everybody. There are income limits, right? Yeah. And the income limits for the for the 1% are limited. You know, in this area, it's like $50,000. Granted, 
some people that that would fit right but you have to think of the right demographic for that like are you a single like bachelor just graduated college you want to get into your first house you just land your first job and your salary is fifty thousand. perfect right firefighters a lot of firefighters make around 50, 45 48 fifty thousand dollars perfect right like a single mom that works at a wherever perfect right but it's not going to be a fit for everybody and but it's an option and if you don't qualify for the one percent you probably are definitely going to qualify for the three percent which is also a great option uh there used to be a lot of what are called loan level pricing adjustments for the three percent product making it not as appealing meaning uh they would kind of jack the rate up if the credit was a little bit lower um right. and because there was only three percent down well Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac took away those loan level pricing adjustments which makes that conventional three percent more appealing so I as a lender I look at the full picture and I'm like I don't just say if someone comes to me and says hey I'm looking for an FHA loan I'm not going to say okay because I'm not an order taker right if I look at their file and I'm like you have perfect credit you have in, you have good income like you're buying this situation I'm not putting them in an FHA loan right I'm going to say hey we have a conventional three percent or a conventional five percent there are going to be better options you're going to have a lower rate you're going to have lower PMI and you're not going to have the stipulations of an FHA loan right mm -hmm. so I look at that full picture I used to be like uh, FHA is probably better if your credit is not picture perfect and all this but I don't have to do that anymore because they took those pricing adjustments away so that conventional three percent is a really good option the criteria of that is they either have to make the 80 percent median income limit which is usually I would say 68 to eighty thousand dollars for the household mm -hmm. or one of them has to be a first time home buyer. So if one of the borrowers is a first time home buyer, they don't have to meet that requirement of the um, income limit. That's great. So it's it's great. Yeah, and we're doing a lot of them. And I would say even as a real estate agent or as a consumer, if you've been a person who's been shopping FHA, shopping FHA, shopping FHA, and not going under contract because of either the condition of the house or being more competitive against a conventional offer, Relook at your qualifications, right? Like I would, I would go through like my client base. Like, hey, who was I pre-qualified as an FHA buyer? Can we get them into this conventional three percent? That's going to make them just that little bit stronger, and maybe have a more option for more, uh, for more houses, right? With and have a bit better um, inventory and be a little bit more competitive. Yeah, and you also mentioned you've got some. There's been some changes in new construction as well because we have a lot of people that yeah. maybe can't find the inventory they want. They'd like to build, but some construction products are really to get into yeah definitely so i uh, i would say that's what i'm most excited about is and it's honestly a product i've been like begging for for years <laughs> um because the thing is what is our struggle inventory right we're serious serious inventory issues so every day i get multiple calls hey i want to buy a i want to build a house i want to build a house okay well will your builder do a turnkey loan or do you have 20 percent to put down right like those are kind of the options um, because a traditional construction loan normally requires 20% or a turnkey loan, the builder has to finance it. Not a lot of builders want to do that anymore. So we just rolled out a conventional 5% down where it's a one-time close at the beginning of the process. Uh, and then there's disbursements throughout. So the builder is getting the financing, but the consumer only has to put 5% down. Normally they'd have to put 20%, which was kind of pigeonholing, right? So if you don't have 20%, sorry, you can't build now they can do both right now they can put five percent down and do a traditional construction loan which now opens them up to being able to have a lot more options for builders because a lot of builders weren't doing turnkey well now we can do the traditional with that but even better than that is we also just rolled out a va one-time close with no money down for veterans i work with a ton of vet i'm the only vetted va professional in new england so i do a lot of va loans and that's probably my biggest question for veterans is them asking if we have a one-time closed construction product and now we do. So mm -hmm. it's the same, same process as the conventional one um, closes at the beginning disbursements throughout. It's an, both of them are interest only loans during the construction period, and then they'll convert over into a 30 year fixed. But the best part about it is if the rate is lower at the time of completion, it automatically floats down to that lower rate. That's a real, oh, wow. so it's, but if the rates were higher, you're already locked in. So that's a huge, huge advantage of this product is that they, because especially right now, if they start building now, rates are supposed to be lower, you know, when, when they close. 
so they can automatically float down to that lower rate. During the construction period, there's a little hit to the rate that's a little bit higher during the interest only, but then it will float down. So yeah, it's it, our goal is to, as brokers, is we want to give agents and buyers as many resources as we can, right? Like more tools you have in your tool belt, the more people you can get under contract, the more options that they have, right? So if someone says like it's, they need credit help. Great. We have a great credit repair company. If they say they need, um, you know, they need a bank statement loan. Great. We have those options. Oh, we have investment products, whatever they are, right? Like we're constantly looking for more options to give more people an opportunity to buy. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I mean, to have all those products at your disposal and to, you know, not just push one, right? Oh, this one's going to pay me more. No, it's yeah. what's the best for the uh, the consumer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, on average, I mean, are you seeing the, the number of pre-approvals, pre-qualifications is much higher uh, than this time last year? I think it's much higher than this time last year. Um, to, but I think like I had, I came in this morning when I left last night, between when I left last night at six and came in this morning, I had nine new filled out applications for nine new buyers in a few hours, but I, I was actually looking at my, kind of at my numbers of who in the last like 20 days or yeah, beginning of the month, I've had just over 50 people apply for mortgages. Zero of them have gone under contract. Wow. Like, yeah, wow. That's what's frustrating yeah. there. It's not that they're not making offers and it's not that they're not qualified. They're extremely qualified. And right. I think that that's the frustrating part. Um, right now is that everybody's getting like stressed and frustrated and like, where we may be running 15 different properties at three different purchase prices and they're making competitive offers, right? Like competitive offers and it's still hard, right? So you have to ask yourself and work with an agent and a lender that are like, how can I make this more competitive, right? So, you know, in the last 24 hours, I've had seven loans clear to close and the la the longest one took 16 days. So that's another way of being more competitive, right? Like how quickly can can your lender get this closed, right? Like the one I got today was clear close in seven days. So if you're competing against cash and you say, hey, I can't, I mean, I'm even writing out of the letters because reality, full approval in 24 hours and three week close, two week close, whatever, whatever makes it, you know, kids ever compete against cash and they're like, yeah, we need a 45 day close, but it's cash. Well, let's get financing in six, six days, you know, wh whatever the case may be, um, just other ways. And, and a seller will feel better about things if you're like, yeah, I can have that fully approved for you in 24 hours, 16 hours, whatever the case may be, rather than, you know, some people are like, yeah, two week turn time, five day turn. It just eases them. It makes it a little bit more competitive in that situation.